Hello everyone. Today we will be talking about the motor system examination. Now the motor system examination, what all tools do you need to carry with you? So you need to take a measuring tape, knee hammer and key. So those are the only three things that you need to carry with you to do the motor system examination. So for the motor system examination, you need not carry too many things with you. You just need a measuring tape, a knee hammer and a key. That's all you need for the motor system examination. Then what is the basic approach to the motor system examination? What all points are you supposed to check? So these are the six things that you have to check. The bulk, the tone, power, deep tendon reflexes, superficial reflexes and the gait of the patient. So we'll see each one of them individually. Now the bulk assessment, the first and foremost, you can do a general inspection and see whether the patient has any atrophy, any wasting or hypertrophy. Then the actual measurements can be done by two methods. Either you can take two fixed bony points, find out their midpoint and measure the bulk there, or you have some predefined fixed points like in the arm you have 10 centimeters above the olecranon process, forearm 10 centimeters below the olecranon process, thigh 18 centimeters above the upper border of patella, leg 10 centimeters below the tibial tuberosity. So you can use either of the two methods. The concept remains that this has to be bilaterally symmetrical points, right? And any difference of more than equal to one centimeter becomes pathological. Anything which is less than one centimeter is normal. Okay. So that is how you assess the bulk in the motor system examination. So first we begin with the bulk assessment. Now bulk assessment, you can just have a general inspection of the muscles, whether there is any wasting, there is atrophy or hypertrophy which is present. And then you do the actual assessment by using the measuring tape, okay? Now, where exactly would you measure, right? Now, the measurement basically can be done in two ways. So, the first is that you select two fixed bony points and then you choose a distance in the midpoint and measure the bulk in the arm, in the forearm, in the thigh and then in the leg, okay? Or you have the fixed points and a fixed distance from each point where you can measure. So I'll show you the first method. So you can choose the two fixed pony points, the acromen in the olecranon, and find out the midpoint between the two and then measure the bulk there. Or you can just choose the olecranon and take 10 centimeters above it and measure the bulk there. Okay, so I'll just show you. So we have the acromen here, we have the olecranon here. So we just measure the distance between the two we take the midpoint and then we measure the bulk there, okay? Now the idea is that you should have comparable points on both the limbs, okay? Because any difference of more than one centimeter between the two limbs is going to be significant, okay? So in the arm, you can choose the two fixed bony points, take their midpoint and measure the bulk there and use the exactly same point on the contralateral limb because you need to look for the difference between the two limbs, okay? So this is how you do it in the arm. Now moving forward to the forearm, either you can choose the olecranon and move 10 centimeters below it or you choose two fixed bony points, either the olecranon and the styloid like we're going to do here. So we choose measure them and then we take the bit point and we measure the bulk there. And we do the same thing on the opposite limb and measure the difference between the two. So after doing the bulk assessment in the upper limb, we do the same in the lower limb, okay? So first we do a general inspection, look for any wasting, atrophy or hypertrophy, and then we do the measurements. Again, the same method, we choose two bony points, find the midpoint between them and take the bulk there, or we have some fixed points like we have 18 centimeters above the patella or 10 centimeters below the tibial tuberosity for the leg. 
Okay. Now the preferred method is to always choose two bony points and take their midpoint into the bulk assessment. So for the thigh, you can choose the upper border of patella and the ASIS. So you can take these two bony points, find out their midpoint and then measure the bulk here. Okay. And you do this on the opposite side as well. Or you can take a point from the upper border of patella, 18 centimeters, and then you measure the bulk there. So that's either of the two methods can be used for thigh. So for the leg, again, you can choose two fixed bony points, the tibial tuberosity and the medial tuberosity that we have here. And then you can find out the distance between them, choose the midpoint, and then take the bulk assessment there, okay? Or you can choose a point which is 10 centimeters below the tibial tuberosity. So you can do either of the two methods. The concept is that the points have to be bilaterally symmetrical so that you do not miss out on any difference. Moving forward, we have the tone, okay? Now, before we go on to how we assess the tone, it is important to know that what is tone. So this is a very good question that you can get in your VIVA examination that define tone. So what is tone? It is the resistance offered by the resting muscles to a passive stretch. Okay, so it's important that the muscle has to be resting and it is a passive stretch. Okay, now in the upper limb, you can check at the elbow or the wrist joint. In the lower limb, you can check at the knee or the ankle joint, right? Now, the tone can be either increased or it can be decreased. Now, in the increased tone, we have spasticity or rigidity. The reduced tone is what we call as flaccidity. However, if it is variable, we call it as a Gegenhalten tone, okay? Another important viva question, the tone is regulated by which tracks? So, remember the mnemonic VRT which stands for vestibulo, reticulo, and tectospinal tracts. So remember, your corticospinal tracts are not responsible for maintaining the tones. These are the extrapyramidal tracts, your vestibulospinal, your reticulospinal, rubrospinal, tectospinal. These tracts are responsible for maintaining the tone in the body. Okay? So after the bulk assessment, we move on to the assessment of tone. Now, what actually is tone? Tone is the resistance offered by the resting muscle to a passive stretch, okay? So it is very important that your patient has to be completely resting. They don't have to make any active movement while you are assessing the tone. Now, tone assessment in the upper limb is done at two joints. One is at the elbow joint and then at the wrist joint, okay? Abilkul relax bit here. Oh. Okay? Now at the elbow, you just make repetitive movements and look for the tone of the muscles. Now important, the patient doesn't have to make any active movements. So once you have checked for the tone at the elbow, you check the tone at the wrist. For the wrist tone, you just hold the hand like this and move the wrist. Important, the patient is not supposed to make any active movements, right? So this is how you check for the tone in the upper limb, at the elbow joint, and then at the wrist joint. So after we've checked the tone in the upper limb, we move on to check the tone in the lower limb. Now, how do you do that? You can do it by two methods. Either you can simply roll the limb side to side and see how they are moving. So if it is flaccidity, which is a low tone, the limbs will move very freely. And if it is spastic or rigid, which is an increased tone, the limbs will not move freely. So the first method is to simply roll the limb side to side. The second method is that you simply flex it and see for the movement. Now a normal limb just stops midway, okay? But however, if it is flaccid, it overshoots. If it is spastic or rigid, it just doesn't move at all. Okay, so those are the two methods of tone assessment in the lower limb. Then once you are done with the tone, we move on to the power assessment. Now for the power assessment, you need to remember the MRC grading, which will be used. Now what is this grading? Zero means that there is no contraction, no movement. 
when you have only a flicker of contraction but no movement of the joint we call it grade 1 when there is a movement but only with the gravity eliminated then we call it as grade 2 however if the patient is able to do a movement which is against the gravity as well we call it grade 3 once the patient is able to do it against gravity you put resistance and if the patient is able to do it with some resistance, we call it as 4. But if he is able to do it with full resistance, we call it grade 5. Okay. So this is very, very important for all of you to remember. What is the MRC grading of power? So we'll just recap it once again. 0 is no contraction. 1 is flicker of movement. 2 is gravity eliminated. 3 is with the gravity, 4 is with some resistance, 5 is with full resistance. Okay, so this is very important for all of you to remember. Now, in the upper limb, we check power at shoulder, elbow, wrist and then the intrinsic muscles of hand. Now, what all movements do you check at the shoulder joint? You check for the abduction, adduction, flexion, extension. At the elbow joint, we check for flexion, extension, wrist, flexion, extension, and then the intrinsic muscles of hand. And we'll see how to examine each of these muscles in detail. Now at the shoulder joint for the abduction, we ask the patient to elevate the hand above the level of the head. So this is the shoulder joint abduction power of 3 by 5 as this is against the gravity. So once the patient has done it against the gravity, then you give it a resistance. Then you apply the resistance and if they are able to resist, then it's a power of 5 by 5. So this is how you check for the shoulder joint abduction. So after that, we check for the shoulder adduction in which we ask the patient to adduct the shoulder towards the body. Once he is able to do that, we apply resistance and check for it. Okay. So if he's able to do that, it's a power of 3 by 5. Then you ask the patient to do it against resistance. Now take So if the patient is able to do it against resistance, it's a power of 5 by 5. So after we've checked the abduction and adduction, we check for the flexion and extension at the shoulder joint. For flexion, is hat ko aage leke jaiye se. So this is the flexion with the power of 3 by 5 as this is against gravity. So once the patient has done that, we check the same thing by applying resistance. Wapis leke aiye. Ab mein taakat lagaungi, uske saath karna hai. Kijiye. So you try to resist the activity and still the patient is able to do it. That's a power of 5 by 5. Okay. So that's flexion. Now for the extension, heart ko piche likhe jaiye. So that's extension with the power of 3 by 5. Kijiye. Then you try to resist and if the patient is still able to maintain it and do it, it's a power of 5 by 5. So that is the shoulder joint, abduction, adduction, flexion and extension. First check with 3 by 5 that is against the gravity. Once the patient is able to do that, you apply the resistance. If the patient is able to do it even with against the resistance, it's a power of 5 by 5. Now we move on to the elbow joint in which we have to check for flexion and extension. Now how do we check for flexion with the power of 3 by 5 that is gravity eliminated? We simply ask the patient to flex. Isko morye. Once he is able to do it against the gravity, we apply the resistance and check if he is able to maintain it. Ame bahar ki taraf karungi, aapne rokna hai. So he is able to maintain it against the resistance. So that's a power of 5 by 5. So after we have checked for flexion, we check for extension. Now how do you check for extension in a power of 3 by 5 that is a gravity eliminated? Now this is a very common mistake that the residents make. 
Because if you ask the patient to extend like this, in this posture, the gravity is not eliminated. So how do you do it? You ask the patient to do a Vande Matram kind of a movement where it is against the gravity and that is a power of 3 by 5. Mm -hmm.